Palestinians have neither a sovereign state nor an independent economy, but this new sector is helping shape their future. Leaders started in Ramallah in, back in 2008, and uh, from the day we started, we were focusing on uh, building an innovation economy in Palestine. The high-tech and startup scene in the Palestinian territories is rapidly growing. Achan says education is the main reason. We have a number of good universities functioning in Palestine. On average, we have uh, around three to 4,000 graduates in the IT-related domains, which gives you an access to a good pool of, of talent to recruit from. Another success story is Asal, a software and hardware development house located in Rawabi, the first ever planned city built for and by Palestinians in the West Bank. Murad Tahboub, its CEO and co-founder, says the high-tech sector is headed in the right direction. Unfortunately, the stereotype people will have about Palestine is about trouble, is about politics, is about so many things but not business. The good thing is that we have a very, vi very vibrant uh, private sector. We have a very a growing high-tech sector. has been growing for the past 15 years at least 10% annually. But Palestinian startups face many obstacles. Israel maintains tight security restrictions on import and export, and Palestinians complain of many checkpoints that limit their movements. Tahboub says they see this as an incentive to work harder. First of all, uh, because of, of our situation and uh, for a for, uh, long period of time we've been under occupation, Israeli occupation, Palestinians look at the high-tech as a window to prove themselves internationally. He's also eager to showcase his talent to the world. And this is where we want to uh, you know, put our message to the international business community, come and look at Palestine as a destination for software and hardware development. Despite lagging behind Israel's high-tech companies, Palestinians remain ambitious. For example, one of the companies that we have is a back office for a, for a company in New York and uh, Los Angeles that is focused on recruitment in the hospitality industry. The whole back office is being operated from Palestine with the call center team, the developers, the, the graphic designers. It's all being done in Palestine. It's recruiting around 100 people that are selling to the U.S. market. 23% of startups in the West Bank and Gaza are led by women, compared to New York, where it's just 12%. My work focuses on three main pillars. The first one is the, the building capacity and training. The second is innovation and entrepreneurship. The third is tech businesses. My priority is tech businesses. Like my mission is to attract multinational companies in the tech sector to start their operations in Rawabi. With no or little governmental support, Palestinian high-tech business has no doubt they are the future of a better Palestinian economy. I see it contributing to the economy, I see it contributing to employment, I see it bringing in uh, foreign income to Palestine. And we've seen companies that are focusing on uh, outsourcing uh, or companies that are basically back offices to startups in the US or Europe who are recruiting people from Palestine doing the work for other countries. From Ramallah, Mohammed Al-Qasim, reporting for the Media Line.